of my career, I had abstracted hundreds of works on paper from ovoid, spherical, branching, and spiraling growth patterns found in nature. Having had two solo exhibits at the Art League in LaGrange, Illinois, and at Columbia College in South Carolina in 1987. This is the banded tulip, then the sunrise fig shell, next the scallop shell, and the Florida fighting conch. The banded tulip shell is an example of various shades of color displayed as seen in mollusk shells as formed by a mantle or kind of outer skin and embellished according to the inclination of the occupant known to us as the living organism. Here we are confronted by the creative power of nature. The sunrise fig shell with the central aperture of dark and brilliant reds and yellows is a beautiful shell, bone white appearing to have a flowing mantle. We go now to the scallop shell. Here we see a bivalve that shows a strong linear pattern in its direction of growth. Aristocratic family of scallops are known for their cheerful colors and delicate sculpturing, including the birth of Venus, as many artists portrayed. Here I am holding this Florida fighting conch specimen, showing a bright and orange and brown finish on this graceful shell. This is not as rare as one is inclined to believe. This group is seedlings, and this is the sense of place, the bean seedling, the sense of place, the corn seedling, the seed dreaming of leafing and breaking the seed coat. A sense of place, the bean seedling. Regeneration and emotional resilience define my art practice. That passion motivates me to take action, to interpret the mysteries of life. A sense of place, the corn seedling. Now the seed becomes the magic symbol of the endless cycle. After the plant dies and is buried, the corn is harvested and the seed is born again. That's the cycle of life. The seed dreaming of leafing essentially is the story of birth. It's a small universe. The white root has potential, an embryo. Imagine my thrill at seeing the leaf shape of new growth emerge. Breaking the seed coat shows the potential for germinating sufficient energy to guarantee future generations. The creation of 1,000 forests is in one acorn, has said Emerson. This group of blossoms includes from left to right the petunia and its stem, the hybrid orchid, the perpetual cyclamen, and the summer squash blossom. The petunia and its stem. This is an example of the inner light in my pastel drawings from the series of garden flowers. And the hybrid orchid. We cannot fathom the mystery of a single flower nor is it intended that we should, said John Ruskin, 1819 to 1900. Perpetual cyclamen, this is the flower of hope and healing that brightens the hospital and the nursery, but remember that the flower fades to make fruit and the fruit rots to make earth. Poet Robertson Jeffers has written. Summer squash blossom, produces fruit. Many artists are drawn to one phase of sexual reproduction in the flower, but the very foundation of the garden is actually in its seeds and their genes. 
So that thing you call abstraction is the will to form and is not objective in the pure sense. Painting the forms of seashells, the seedlings, and the flowers. Thank you for watching.